Discovery Studios in downtown Little Rock. This is Capital View with your host, David Goins. And good Sunday morning to you. Welcome into Capital View. I'm David Goins. Thanks for being with us. A full show for you, our political long table, ready to go with Alice Stewart and Jessica Deloach, their take on the latest in the race for governor and Senate in a little bit. But first, as we head into the last three months of the general election campaign, we're working to introduce you to as many statewide candidates as possible, including the constitutional offices in the state of Arkansas. This morning, we are joined by a candidate uh, for Attorney General Democrat, uh, legislator from Nashville, Nate Steele. Mr. Steele, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, I'm going to pick on you right away. I look at your website and uh, I don't see the word Democrat anywhere on your website. Why is that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a proud legislator and I'm a proud member of the Democratic Party from Howard County, um, but it's not particularly relevant to this race. I, my, my views on issues directly related to criminal justice, I think, uh, are not particularly partisan. As I often say, I think enforcing the law is what the Attorney General ought to do. There's not a Democratic way or Republican way to do that, or just right ways and wrong ways to do it. Um, on your website, you, you talk about being the only candidate uh, to uh, have the experience to walk into the office ready to go on day one. Uh, what do you mean by that, and what, I guess maybe what experience do you feel your, your opponent, Leslie Rutledge, Republican, doesn't have? Well, you know, I've served as a prosecutor in the trenches, and I've tried the real cases. I've prosecuted capital murder cases, rape cases, uh, drug deliveries and everything in between. I think that experience is critical because going forward, we're at a critical time in criminal justice in this state, and I think the Attorney General needs to understand those issues backwards and forwards as we tackle sentencing reform and prison overcrowding and all those important issues facing the legislature next session. I mean, Rutledge has talked about her experience as a prosecutor as well. Is that not... Uh you know, add up in your estimation? I believe there are different kinds of prosecutors, but as I said, I have strong support from law enforcement around the state, and I think that's because of my experience actually trying these cases. Uh, I know you've, you've mentioned this to me before, and actually uh, also on your on your website, talking about, you know, plenty of problems in the state of Arkansas uh, at home, whether it's, you know, protecting, you know, children from online predators or uh, elders and consumer protection, all the things you, you'd expect from the Attorney General's office. You say, I don't understand why other candidates are talking about national issues. What exactly are you referencing there? Well, you know, it was, it was full in the Republican primary, uh, the issues of the federal government and federal politics, and that continues to be what, what my opponent focuses on. Uh, I'm sure that, that that polls well, but the Attorney General is not and does not need to be a seventh member of Congress. The Attorney General needs to be focused on Arkansas and Arkansas issues, and it is a critical time, as I said. Public safety, uh, protecting seniors, children, and victims of crimes really ought to be the number one priority of the Attorney General, not federal politics. Uh, sometimes, depending on the constitutional office that the various candidate is running for, they'd like to see maybe maybe certain things, even like a legislative package. You know, Attorney General McDaniel had had offered a few things. Is there anything that you would like to to see happen in the AG's office if if elected? Absolutely. You know, I think, uh, and that's where my opponent and I differ as well. I will have a legislative package, and I, as I said, I think the time is critical. The legislature, as you know, only meets uh, for every two years for 120 days or so. So we need an attorney general ready to go over there and solve these problems. Otherwise, as you know, we we're having to appropriate $100 million for a new prison. Mm -hmm. uh, prison overcrowding is a real problem. We're paroling out people we do not need to be paroling out to make room for others. And so I will have a comprehensive criminal justice plan to take to the legislature in January that will focus on things like drug courts, mental health, uh, and, and sentencing to make sure that we have room in our prisons to keep those violent offenders that we do not need to parole out. That will be my number one priority as attorney general. Uh, I know during the 2013 session you worked on uh, a new lethal injection statute that the state hoped would clarify and maybe get the, the, the ball rolling for, for those who are uh, on death row to maybe begin executions for the first time since 2005. Um, is Arkansas ever going to execute anyone again? Well, first of all, let me say that it's not a coincidence I worked on that legislation. I've worked on criminal justice issues literally my entire adult life. And so I've carried a lot of legislation for the prosecutors and for the Attorney General's office and others. Yes, I do believe that our lethal injection statute is workable. I think that going forward we will continue to improve upon it and make sure that we have the resources we need to carry out uh, verdicts of juries in Arkansas. So you think executions could happen again through lethal injection in the state of Arkansas? I do believe they can happen again in the future, yes. I think, that's a work I think there are workable solutions on that issue. What have you thought over you know, the last week there was an execution in Arizona that some have considered you know, botched uh, in, in the state of Arizona with, through lethal injection? There's been some, some issues with that particular form 
of, of capital punishment? Do you think it's still, it's still workable? There are issues with every form of capital punishment, uh, but I believe in it as a prosecutor. As I said, I've, I've dealt with these victims' families before, uh, and I think the capital punishment is, uh, is a, a, an enormous tool for prosecutors. In a lot of ways, it spares a lot of victims of having to go through the trial. Oftentimes, that's an, an, an issue that's taken off the table in a plea bargain, and that leverage is something that prosecutors desperately need, and it saves victim families from having to relive these terrible events. And as you know, to get a verdict of death, it requires proving every detail and reliving these, these kinds of cases. And that's the main reason I support it, and I do believe that it, it'll work going forward. Uh, transitioning a little bit to uh, the Exxon uh, oil spill in Mayflower from, from last spring. On Friday, I think the most recent court filing was uh, Exxon attorneys had you know an additional time, I think, until September to respond to a uh, request from the, AG, the AG's office as well as U.S. Attorney's office. How do you see your role potentially in that case if you inherit uh, that case, which, given how long litigation goes, it seems like it's, it's likely whoever is the AG. Well, we'll have to look and see what the status of the case is when we get there. But I think that the voters can count on me to do what I think is right, uh, regardless of political pressure either way. I think I've demonstrated that in the legislature, uh, my ability to stand up for voters and do what's right. And certainly the Attorney General protects much of what makes Arkansas such a great state to live in and raise a family. A lot of that is, is natural resources. And so when we have incidents like the Mayflower oil spill, I think it's important that we have an attorney general that's willing to stand up and fight for those people. And I look forward to inheriting that case and seeing what status uh, it is at the time and, and working out uh, a settlement that is fair for those citizens of, of Faulkner County and, and elsewhere. I know there's been one poll methodology and, and, and it's... And it's objectiveness in question, but it did show your opponent Leslie Rutledge uh, up, I believe, 10 percentage points. What do you think the effect of not having, and I, I know every, everybody at the legislature tells me the best way to run is unopposed, uh, but it, it, it's, do you feel in any way that's maybe uh, you know, kept your name not in the spotlight for a while? Sure. Uh, there's no question that you guys and the media in general covered a lot in the primary. Many described it as a race to the bottom. It wasn't exactly a, a, a clean and and encouraging primary, but it was a, a high-profile primary nonetheless. And so, sure, we, we have some name ID differences there to make up, and we're in the process of doing that. Uh, we're running our first ads this Sunday, today, and through this week, and people are going to start seeing uh, what I believe in, what I stand for, and why I'm running, and I think that'll increase name ID, and we'll be in, in really good shape going into the fall. Still think there's room for kind of pragmatic, you know, you consider yourself a conservative, but fairly, fairly moderate legislator. Do you feel that, that that'll play statewide? Absolutely, especially in this office. I mean, the voters of Arkansas are hiring an attorney. They're hiring the attorney general, and they want somebody that is objective and fair and pragmatic. And they don't want an activist attorney general any more than you want an activist judge. And so, yes, I believe it'll play well. And I think so far my message has really resonated with Republicans and Democrats alike. Okay, we'll keep a close eye on this race throughout the fall. Representative Nate Steele, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, good to see you. Okay, well, coming up after a quick break, Mike Ross and Asa Hutchison take their campaigns to the Arkansas Farm Bureau in Northwest Arkansas this week, how they're trying to differentiate themselves on the key issues. I'm David Goins. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. I just enjoy the fact that they make me feel like family. I know that I can trust them. I'm on a very tight budget, so it's very, very affordable for people like me. They will not let you down. I know that the work is done correctly, and I know that my family is going to be safe. Ferguson's Invented is offering free leather upgrades when you buy stressless furniture. This offer is good on any piece of stressless. You save up to $500 per seat and take up to 48 months interest-free on stressless at Ferguson's next to Walmart in Benton. You know Mike Ross helped Nancy Pelosi run up trillions in debt and that Ross voted with Pelosi to waste billions on the stimulus and big government bailouts. But there's more. Mike Ross voted with Nancy Pelosi over 80 times against taxpayers. Over 80 times. Even worse, Mike Ross voted for government health care. More radical, more liberal, and more intrusive than the Obamacare disaster. Mike Ross. Wrong on health care. I'm Nate Steele, and I'm running to be your Attorney General. Here in my hometown of Nashville, Arkansas, I learned important values like faith, honesty, and hard work. My mother always taught me that if you have the opportunity to help someone and you don't, you're wasting your life. She works every day with special needs children in our local public schools. She's strong, smart, and conservative. 
I believe the number one role of government is to protect its citizens. I support alternative criminal justice programs like drug courts. Our prisons are overcrowded, and I don't want violent criminals or sexual predators out of jail before they've served their full terms. Arkansas has the second worst meth rate in America. As an experienced prosecutor, I know firsthand that we release way too many criminals early from prison to make room for even more. It's a revolving prison door, and it's unacceptable. I will put the safety of our seniors, our mothers, and our children far ahead of a national political agenda. Let's keep the focus on Arkansas. Vote Nate Steele for Attorney General. Ferguson's Invented is offering free leather upgrades when you buy stressless furniture. This offer is good on any piece of stressless. You save up to $500 per seat and take up to 48 months interest-free on stressless at Ferguson's next to Walmart in Benton. I'm getting the exact same product from Discount Tire and Brake, but I get better service and I get trusting service. They will not let you down. I know that the work is done correctly and I know that my family is going to be safe. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to Capital View. I'm David Goins. Mike Ross and Asa Hutchison not holding back as they debate the big issues in the governor's race. The Arkansas Farm Bureau hosting a forum in Springdale on Tuesday, which at times got heated between the two candidates. Hutchison accusing Ross of being the deciding vote on a version of the Affordable Care Act and committee, a charge Ross has repeatedly denied as far as his support of the uh, legislation. Ross criticized Hutchison's job as a lobbyist in Washington. The Farm Bureau of course has a particular interest in the agricultural issues of the state including the president's new EPA standards for coal. We have natural gas even though we have nuclear. We're dependent upon coal. We've worked hard to make it clean. This 30 percent reduction by 2030 that the president is calling for um, it, it doesn't make sense. Both Ross and Hutchison told the audience they believe they are the true conservative candidate in this race for governor. While Arkansas jail is seeing the first bit of relief following a legislative fix taken during last month's special session, the bus carried the first 50 state prisoners to a Little Rock facility on Monday. This is now called the Wrightsville Satellite Unit, according to the Department of Corrections. A few weeks ago, lawmakers set aside $6 million to open up beds for these inmates to ease jail overcrowding. At least 200 of those inmates will be housed at the Little Rock facility over the next year. The Arkansas Department of Correction hopes to build a new 1,000 bed prison and will ask lawmakers to fund it when they come back to the session in January. Well, the Arkansas Secretary of State's office says petitioners need to collect more than 15,000 additional signatures to get a minimum wage issue onto the November ballot. The group Arkansas, or excuse me, the group Give Arkansas a Raise Now has until August 18th to, to collect those signatures. A total of roughly 62,000 signatures from at least 15 of Arkansas's 75 counties must be included. Well, when we come back, our political long table, Jessica Deloach and Alice Stewart weigh in on the races for governor and Senate. I'm David Goins. You have Capital View on Sunday morning. J. Tim Barley Construction has been licensed and bonded for over 20 years. We do kitchens, baths, and home improvement projects. Call for a free estimate, 501-556-2999. Go back in comfort with Denver Mattresses Back to School Sale. Save big on Ready for School Mattresses. Our Loveland Memory Foam Twin is just $159, and with a popular Space Base, just $199. For a limited time, get 0% interest until 2017, and enter for a chance to win a shopping spree. Quality, service, selection, and value. Why shop anywhere else? Denver Mattress, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer inside Furniture Row. about being able to chew? How do your teeth look when you smile? Are your teeth broken or damaged by decay? At Dentures and Dental Services of Ryan, we offer immediate smiles. Full replacement dentures start at $395 per set and are often available with one-day treatment. Extractions start at $39 per tooth with the purchase of dentures. Let our staff make your life easier. We're Dentures and Dental Services of Ryan. Call us today for an appointment. 501-847-9901. 
KARK Ford is pleased to be in compliance with the Federal Children's Television Act and provide children's educational programming Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Broadcast licensees must file with the FCC a quarterly children's television programming report. This report is available at KARK for public view. 1401 West Capitol Avenue, Suite 104, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72201. J10 Barley Construction for a free estimate. We do kitchens, baths, and home improvement projects. J10 Barley has been licensed and bonded for over 20 years. 501-556-2999. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to Capital View. I'm David Goins. We're joined now by our political long table. It's good to have Alice Stewart back from 965 The Voice. Good morning, Jessica Deloach, Democratic strategist. Thank you all so much. Good Hi. morning and most important political news of the year. Congratulations on your baby. Well, it's, it's the most important news in our household. Thank you all so much. And it's good to be back. All right, let's start with uh, the governor's race. Uh, Mike Ross, Asa Hutchison. Uh, I don't want to say fairly quiet week, but on Tuesday they did go up to the Farm Bureau up in Northwest Arkansas. Um, earlier in the show, we, we played a portion of that where they both talked about their uh, general dislike of uh, the EPA standards. You know, the call for you know reduction by 2030. Uh, both staking out this claim of being the most you know conservative candidate uh, for this for this office. I'll start with you, Alice. I know you're, obviously you're going to think uh, Mr. Uh, Asa is a, the more conservative, but these are both. Uh, not right in the middle. These are both trending right for these candidates, wouldn't you say? Uh, I think what, what th that race right now is it's doing, it's trending well for Asa Hutchinson. I think that debate, what we saw, is we saw uh, Asa come out conservative on the issues as he has been, and we saw, in my view, we saw Mike Ross come a little bit more to the middle. They both presented conservative views, and Mike Ross showed a little contrast with he and some of the Obama administration policies, and so that was a, it's a good form to do that, but I think we're going to see a lot more of that, where he's he's touting his conservative credentials more and more in these venues. Yes. Sure. Well, the, the Farm Bureau, uh, just that entire uh, meeting, one thing that was a huge takeaway, especially for Democratic viewers, or just all viewers, was just how out of touch Asa Hutchinson came off being, when he couldn't even answer, answer the simplest question, you know, are you a member of the Farm Bureau? And he didn't have an answer for that. I mean, it was a, it was some of an answer, but Mike Ross was able to say, yeah, I am a member. I paid my dues. I get my free breakfast at my yearly event. And it just shows how in tune he is with certain people within the state. And certain constituents. I, I, I mean, key, do you necessarily lose credibility no, in that I situation? I think the key with that was Asa was able to demonstrate I've shown support for Farm Bureau and, and your issues are important. I've been to NDC. I supported you. In DC, and whether or not he paid his thirty-five dollars and got the free breakfast, mm -hmm. beside the point. The fact that he acknowledged that he's been in DC and supporting their issues and their causes. Is that a retail politics type of issue, though? Would you know, Asa? So maybe you don't think so. <laughs> no, I can't. Imagine. I think more people would be concerned if they asked uh, Asa, "Did you vote Obamacare out of committee?" He would say no. <laughs> but they asked Mike Ross, "Did you vote Obamacare out of committee?" And he would say yes. And that's then, bigger concern. And, and then he would say he didn't vote for it. But and the truth is, voted is that he did. He didn't. Right. That's and that's a distraction. I mean, Asa Hutchinson. I mean. Put it to you this way. You need to kind of know what audience you're going before. And if you can't answer the most basic question, that doesn't, that doesn't even look good. It shows that you're just out of touch and that you're not tuned in to who you're speaking to. How can you possibly meet people on their level if you can't even just get the basic stuff right? Alice, there's something to that, maybe being tone deaf to the audience a little bit? No, uh, it's not tone deaf. If he can say, with all honesty, look, I've been supporting your issues and your causes in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., and I will continue to do that uh, when I'm elected governor. There's nothing tone deaf about that. Well, Farm Bill, uh, or I say Farm Bill, the Farm Bureau has kind of, um, you know, picked up a lot of uh, attention, not only you know, in the governor's race, but obviously when, when uh, Congressman Cotton spoke about the farm bill, that was kind of another, uh, you know, tough situation to be in voting against it, but speaking right in front of that group. So we'll talk about that in a little bit later. Um, 
also in the governor's race, uh, you know, Mike Ross, I guess it was about two weeks ago now, uh, brought out this, this public safety um, uh, platform focusing on, on domestic violence. Um, it's picked up a little traction, at least from, from more, uh, I would say, more liberal-leaning media. MSNBC talked about it uh, quite a bit. Um, Jessica, do you see that as, as, a, as a particular issue that's going to bring out a, uh, a type of voter in November, potentially? I do. I see it mobilizing, or I see it assisting with, uh, the, women's, with the women vote, you know? Mm -hmm. Because Arkansas does frequently make its way onto the list of being, you know, one of the top ten worst states for women when it comes to men killing women. And that... Part of that is domestic abuse. And I think all women can appreciate anybody who wants to take a stand and say, I want to make your life better. I want to help create a safer situation for you. And it is a comprehensive plan uh, in regards to curbing domestic violence and child abuse. It's mm -hmm. on his website. It's, so it's a little bit too much to get into here, but it is a really wonderful plan. And I do think that means a lot to women, especially survivors, victims and survivors of that particular tragic situation. Yeah, it, is, it is a good issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is important to come out and, and, and make a stand on that. Of course, you're not going to find anyone that's opposed to that. Sure. And, and it was a, a good media day uh, on that camp. But the bottom line is uh, the role of governor is certainly to, to help create jobs and to improve education and ha give us nice, good, safe roads. And that's something that Asa Hutchinson has on the forefront. And that's why we're seeing him ahead in the polls mm -hmm. time after time after time. And uh, fundraising is through the roof. And that's why the uh, Republican Governors Association is working hard to invest money in this race so he can be elected governor because they have confidence that that's going to happen. Yeah, and both candidates have spent a, a fair amount of time talking about you know, public safety. You know, Asa has talked about increasing yeah. the amount of you know, probation officers and so forth, even though economic development and education seems to be you know, the things that we've attached to the governor's office, especially with Governor Beebe. The, the crime part is, is, is getting a lot of play. Yeah, and it's important, and public safety is a, is a key role uh, for governor. Of course, education is key. And both of them have a jobs plan. They both have an education plan. They differ a little bit on, on education, given mm -hmm. that ACE is more the in the computer aspect of it, yeah. and, and Mike Ross is more the, the Votech. But still, mm -hmm. education is, is certainly going to be a big issue in this race. Okay. All right. Uh, Alice Stewart, Jessica Deloach, okay. don't go anywhere. We're going to have a whole lot more. Talk a little bit more about the U.S. Senate race and maybe a little bit about uh, the state AG race. We'll be back with our political long table. When we come back, I'm David Goins. You're enjoying Capitol View on Sunday morning. Can't afford the help you really need? Superior Senior Care lets you choose your caregiver, your schedule, and your budget, making home care affordable. We have been helping Arkansas seniors receive quality, cost-effective care for over 29 years. Call Superior Senior Care today. You say tomato? Old El Paso says, dice tomato stand and stuffed chicken tacos. You say, what's for dinner? Old El Paso says, start somewhere fresh. How do you help her? Make help her with your favorite ingredients for a fresh taste you'll love. Help her. Make it yours. Ultimate Helper. Available at Walmart. Nothing looks and feels quite like genuine American-made leather. It's easy to see the difference when you get your hands on the very best. And Ferguson's Furniture in Benton has the largest selection of the best leather furniture that money can buy. With unbelievable comfort and construction that will last for generations. Statewide delivery available in 48 months interest-free. Come see our exclusive line of USA Leather Furniture today at Ferguson's Furniture next to the Walmart in Benton. A great deal on a new car isn't just about the price. The car is part of the deal, too. Is it good? Or the best? Could it take you 100,000 miles or more? Is it really worth the price? Want a great deal? Head to your Toyota dealer during the Camry One event. Because it's not a great deal if it's not a great car. Right now, during the Camry One event, get $2,000 or 0% financing for 72 months, plus $500 on a new 2014.5 Camry. Toyota, let's go places. At Tzatziki's, we appreciate your business. That's why we work hard to create a fresh, casual, and delicious dining experience for every customer, every time. At Tzatziki's, we consider it an honor to serve you a perfect meal, priced right with a smile. At Tzatziki's, we guarantee delicious food and great service. But don't take our word for it. Listen to what our customers have to say. We love Tzatziki's. Oh, no. 
Are you a veteran or a Medicaid recipient and need help with your daily activities? You may be able to receive home care services at no cost. Call Superior Senior Care today at 501-663-CARE or visit us at superiorseniorcare.com. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Hello there. Welcome back to Capital View. I'm David Goins. We rejoin our long table, Jessica Deloach, Alice Stewart. Uh, Nate Steele, in the, in the beginning of, of the show, uh, running for attorney general on the Democrat side, going against Leslie Rutledge, who had the very high profile primary uh, against David Sterling, who she ended up uh, defeating in the runoff. Um, first off, you know, you get into these down ballot races and people, you know, maybe don't, don't pay attention as much. Um, but your thoughts from, from what Nate Steele said, because obviously his name ID is probably not as high as Leslie Rutledge's. Well, not, not after that slugfest she went through in the primary. She's got mm -hmm. tremendous name ID and she's got the credentials to, go, to, to back it up. One thing he said that really stood out with me is he said the AG's office is not a seventh member of Congress. I, I, I take exception to that given that the role of the AG is to represent the state and to help prevent federal government overreach like Obamacare and large federal government encroachment on the state and so there is a need for our AG to look at the not just the state picture but nationally and Leslie Rutledge has made that clear that's one of the key priorities of her being AG and I, I think that that's not the right but mindset is that the I guess I guess the argument maybe Jessica would be should that be the number one concern for the Attorney General's office? No I wouldn't say so I mean ultimately the Attorney General needs to make sure the business of the state is run sure. as smoothly as possible and I think candidate Steele He's kind of a glimpse of types of leadership we've had in the past. It's what Arkansas voters like to have. And, you know, right now, like Alice was saying, Leslie has generated quite a bit of name ID, especially after that really tumultuous primary or that runoff that she went through. You know, Nate, though, however, you'll hear people say over and over, once they meet him, they're just like, God, he's, he is great. He is solid. I can depend on someone like him. Sure. And I think his name ID just comes from campaigning. And he will close that gap with her if there is a gap there to be close pretty quickly. We'll okay. see how many ads those those races get for sure. Right. Let's let's pivot real quick uh, to the US Senate race would be we dare if we didn't at least talk a little bit about <laughs> exactly. the US Senate race. Uh, a, a little quiet this week. I mean, I, I, you know, both Pryor and Cotton are in DC because the you know the August recess is coming. There's been a lot of votes, really a lot of the votes have been uh, about foreign policy issues, you know, a lot going on with Ukraine, you know, Sudan uh, and, and the situation in, in Gaza and Israel. But um, at least on the campaign front, it seems like the campaign flax are the ones who are really talking about this idea of, you know, debates and so forth. Will they debate? Will they not debate? Uh, I know we, we keep up with that stuff, but viewers at home, um, how much do we think we want to see these, these folks uh, coming into November? I think the key with that issue is the fact that this is really one of the first times Mark, Senator Pryor has had to really run on his record. Mm -hmm. and he's. Uh, not had to do that like he has this time and it's important and critical for the voters out there to hear him defend his record and see what he has to say on, on his voting with Obama 90 percent of the time and support for Obamacare and these key issues are coming up again this week with the, the, mm. the court rulings on Affordable Care Act it's important and I think as a journalist you should push for it I think as as all members of the media you should push for it and the voters should push for it because they need to hear the contrast of the two candidates in this important race on the debate stage on the issues mm. with follow-up and, yeah, back and forth. clearly there's going to be debates the number of debates the format that's gonna be worked out but I guess maybe if that's all we hear about this race this week does it show maybe it's, it's been a quiet a quiet week in this race absolutely it's it's been a quiet week but I think these quiet weeks are uh, short-lived. They're numbered. Their days are numbered. Everything sure. is about to kick up a great deal. And I think by the end of it, voters will have had enough of listening to what every candidate has had to say. Right. And the conflicting ACA ruling on, was it Monday or Tuesday, uh, from a D.C. circuit uh, and then a, a Virginia appellate court, does either side really, does that just kind of go to the background or? I think this, what this does once again, it brings Obamacare back on the table and it shows people this is a big hunk of Swiss cheese that's filled, of, filled with holes. And once again, we have to have senators like Mark Pryor defend their vote for, for this health care plan mm -hmm. that's got some constitutional questions to it. And granted, the two different court rulings relatively kind of cancel, negate they each can't other cancel out. each yeah. other but it does raise the question did Mark Pryor even read this bill before he voted for it or not it doesn't appear that he did because there continues to be delays and extensions and court rulings uh, opposing it but what you're seeing though is everyone who has been opposed to this or who's using these one of the court rulings to make their case for why we need to just start over they don't have a plan they're not coming to the table with anything else so it's you know if you want to kick over 180,000 Arkansans off mm -hmm. of this insurance if you if you would like to have people return to the days of no coverage for pre-existing conditions, then I guess that's the path 
that you'll choose to go down. Yeah. But Senator Pryor does not want to see that happen. He wants to do what's best for the Arkansas people and for the American people as his role as a United States Senator. All right, I'll let you have the last word. Jessica Deloach, Alice Stewart, thanks so much for joining us on this Sunday morning. Great to see you all again. Thank you, you too. too, David. All right. All right, well, Arkansas Junior Senator John Bozeman was back in action at the Capitol Hill up in D.C. three months after a health care scare that nearly cost him his life. In April, Senator Bozeman underwent emergency heart surgery for a tear in his aorta. Doctors told him if he had waited much longer to get treatment, he likely would not have survived. The first-term senator says it's given him a new lease on life. The little things in life, uh, faith, family, uh, you know, feeling the, the, the breeze in your face, uh, the sun, all of that's kind of corny, but those are little things that you just don't appreciate until you go through something like this. And Senator Bozeman credits the prayers of people across Arkansas for helping him bounce back and us here at Capitol View.